I know that this is late, but better late than never is what they say. Right? Yeah. <laughs> So, it's easy to say that Disney and Marvel Studios these days have one of, if not the most decisive fan base when it comes to entertainment. Star Wars has basically ran their longtime fandom into the ground with the genius writing strategy of writing their legacy characters completely into the ground until they're basically unrecognizable and pathetic shells of their former selves in an effort to prop up its new, diverse, strong, and in its biggest case, god-tier characters like Rey and Reva which I can confidently say isn't really working out for Kathleen. Star Trek has lost its vision and fails to capture what Star Trek is all about, skipping out on the more complex elements from its earlier installments for the sake of fake CGI explosions and a female space Jesus. And even looking at franchises like Doctor Who and the Terminator franchise are both failing to capture newer audiences, as well as alienating their longtime fan base in order to fit the standard mold and shape of the world that we live in today. Whatever happened to films and TV shows being made to be timeless entertainment, movies that were shown to you by the older generation of friends and family to inevitably be shown to your friends and family to eventually be shown to the next generation, with the cycle continuing year after year. But that's a different discussion for another day, so I digress. My point is, is that Marvel and its fan base hasn't gotten to the point as many of those other franchises. There's a certain investment that us, the audience, have with the MCU. Even a high, cynical guy like myself has invested years and many hours consuming Marvel content. A lot of which being an incredible viewing experience dating all the way back to films in Phase 1 and throughout Phase 2 and 3. With some of the most memorable adaptations of characters put to screen and achieving a feat that has never been done before having movie after movie with its interconnected universe, Marvel in its peak form was truly groundbreaking. And while I've already talked about the specifics and the details in another video surrounding the various reasons why I think this Phase 4 could be the potential downfall of the franchise and its divisive fan base, which I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go check it out after this video, because for all of the people out there familiar with the term filler, you can truly start to understand what I mean when it comes to the MCU in this direction post-Endgame. But that's not what we're here to discuss today. We're here to discuss Moon Knight, one of the most anticipated Disney Plus shows when announced, and the first of its kind being the first Marvel Phase 4 show to introduce a new character without being alongside a pre-established story and a pre-established character to make the journey more smooth and coherent for its more, uh, dedicated fan base. Yeah. <laughs> Which sounded like a great idea. A show where we were finally going to be graced with some creative writing, creative characters, and world building without having to fully dive in headfirst into the Marvel formula with an unrecognizable but interesting hero that had an incredible screen presence for the first time when watching the trailer. In a way, there was nothing that could go wrong if even a little bit of time, effort, passion, and craft went into it. And with a TV show formula for eight hours of introduction and character development to flesh out the character, what could possibly go wrong? Aw, oh, shit. Let's just get into it, shall we? The show follows our main character, Stephen Grant played by Oscar Isaac, who really gives one of the most phenomenal acting roles that we've seen so far in Phase 4, which I know isn't really saying much, but he really shows off his chops in this role in more ways than once, and really makes you think about what the fuck we're doing over there at Disney Star Wars. But again, I digress. For lack of better terms, Stephen Grant is a spineless twat, who works at a gift shop in London and is constantly undergoing frequent blackouts and loss of memory that led him to live a more passive and scared lifestyle, chaining himself to his bed every night and making a sand circle around it in an effort to keep more control. Which never seems to work for some reason. In one of his many failed attempts to keep control, Stephen finds himself in Austria after another blackout and is thrown into a life or death situation without any prior knowledge as to how he got there or what's even going on. In a writing tactic that was pretty cool and interesting the first couple times throughout the show, Stephen finds himself again going in and out of control, with every time he returns finding himself in a more but also less dangerous situation, seeing how when he's blacking out he's able to take on the men in pursuit of him with relative ease with Steven and us the audience having no idea how this is happening. 
A couple episodes later, and without much grace, you're introduced to the character of Mark Spector, an ex-missionary type of character after being gravely injured in his last mission, made a deal with an Egyptian god named Khonshu, a skeleton bird-like deity that makes a deal with Mark to become his avatar, gracing him with the powers of the Moon Knight, dealing out punishment to those who deserve it, and by punishment, well I mean death. And let me tell you, Khonshu doesn't really fuck around with his philosophy and punishments. It's pretty awesome. Seeing how this is Marvel Phase 4, it's pretty understandable to be a bit confused with the storytelling of this show so far. But bear with me, my dear viewers. It turns out that Mark and Steven are one and the same. Kind of. Mark Spector and Steven Grant are very much different people with different personalities, but coexisting in the same body, with only one being able to be in control at one time, leaving the other in a blackout type of mind space with no memories of the other's actions. With the two developing more of a bond and accepting of each other's different philosophies and mannerisms throughout the entirety of the show. Our villain of the show is named Harrow, played by Ethan Hawke, and in very cliche Marvel fashion, not even specific to Marvel Phase 4 as a whole, is one of the most forgettable and dumbass villains to ever be put to screen in the MCU. Harrow in his past like Mark was an avatar for Khonshu, given the abilities of the Moon Knight and destined to carry out the deity's punishments. Until for some reason, which for the life of me is not explained in the show, decides to abandon Khonshu in favor of another god named Amit, who in a way has the same type of stick and philosophy as Khonshu, but in a much more dumbass way about going about it. You see, while Khonshu goes about punishing those who have already committed the crime, Amit likes to take it a step further, having the abilities and sharing the ability with Haro to weigh the scales of people's hearts and lives, not only their past and their present, but their future, deeming those that can or will commit crimes or become a negative person in the future to not be worthy, and taking their souls in the name of Amit. <laughs> what the fuck? And how does this make sense? Well, it doesn't. What if someone makes an accidental mistake in the future? Should it cost them their lives? What if someone was or is being manipulated into doing something worthy of punishment? What is the weight of the scales? Are we talking murder? Maybe robbery? Drunk driving? Jaywalking? The rules of the scales are simply too vague to grasp the stakes of the situation because in the eyes of Amit, there's no telling what could be deemed as punishable by death. It's really dumb. Basically, when it comes to the plot, it's a race against time and another MacGuffin chase. You see, in an earlier blackout from Steven, Mark steals an amulet that Haro needs in order to find Amit, who has been sealed away by the other gods of her power level, but in order to resurrect Amit to judge or bring balance to the world. Yes, another world-ending villain in Marvel Phase 4, Marvel really has to stop destroying their own stakes because at this point they're even making in-universe jokes about how much people in the MCU see and how the ending of the world doesn't even hold weight anymore. Now I'm not going to go into the entirety of the story and the ending of this dumpster fire. There's more wacky Marvel adventures throughout the show with mediocre action sequences and character revelations that you don't really care about or are foreshadowed so hard that even my three-year-old nephew could have seen it coming. Haro releases the big bad Ahmed to eventually lead into another big CGI battle between the two gods of Ahmed and Khonshu, and with the show not being called Hero, it's pretty obvious who's going to be the victor at the end with no real consequences in universe in order to make you move on and consume next product. There's not really a lot of things to enjoy about this show, but the one thing you can rely on Marvel for is that, of course, there's another. Her name is Layla, or something like that. I'm pretty sure it's Layla who turns out to be Mark's wife from his past, who hasn't been in communication with her for months ever since becoming Kanju's avatar. They truly try their best to make me care about the character, but in reality, she's just the same generic female character that I've seen so many times throughout Marvel Phase 4 that she just gets left in the dust of more forgettable nonsense. 
She's so oblivious to the situation that Mark and Steven are going through and is constantly thinking that it's so surface level that Mark just wanted to ghost her or something like that. She gets an important backstory to try to tie in some of the emotional elements and connect her to Mark's character, but honestly, you just simply don't care at that point. The constant blacking out from Steven in order to skip the action sequences in order to set up a little bit more of the mystery was a cool idea at first, but when he goes on and on and on all the way to the climatic battle of the season finale, it gets old and fast, leading us to what might be the biggest problem in the show as a whole, the lack of Moon Knight. In an eight hour series, you would think you would get more than 15 minutes of actual screen time of a character and a hero that you're trying to promote. But nope, I just must be a dummy in the writing room because Moon Knight is nowhere to be found showing up in around every other episode for around two minutes to be a badass, and then it's time to move back to Layla and more generic dialogue and world building. With a post credit scene introducing the reality of a third personality, you're so mentally checked out at this point that it doesn't even matter, or it doesn't get you excited for future installments because the entire show is just a classic case of blue balls from the writers. Now, it's easy to say that the character from the comics could surely become an interesting character in the future if handled with even a pinch of grace, with epic Marvel-style team-ups with characters like Blade, Daredevil, the Punisher, and others. But when it comes to the Marvel-made character Moon Knight, I definitely have very little faith in the direction of Marvel as a whole, therefore having very little faith in the direction of this interesting character. Unfortunately, Moon Knight was yet just another disappointing Disney product. It's hard to say. It's one of the best Marvel Disney Plus shows, but that doesn't really tell you anything, and I could only really recommend this show in the case of Oscar Isaac's performance. But otherwise, well, this review is late, so that should explain it all. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to check out some of my other videos that I've made. Again, I'm going to put my Marvel Phase 4 Marvel's filler arc video in the description and the comments, so go check that out because I truly do feel that way, especially once we get out of Marvel Phase 4 and enter Marvel even Phase 6 or Phase 7, and we can really look back at this phase as a whole and realize how it was destroying the MCU. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.